From the blue waters of the Mediterranean, we take you east, over the world-renowned cedars of Lebanon, deep into the heart of ancient Syria. There between Damascus and Baghdad lie hundreds of miles of barren, burning sand. And here today, as it was 5,000 years ago, the way of trade across the desert is kept open by the feet of men and camels. Seven days out, and the cool green of an oasis is like a beacon to a lost ship. This, the oasis of Paris, is the first respite from the cruelty of sun and sand. Long ago, this city of an ancient and departed glory levied toll upon the caravans which came to use her wells. Wrecked by a succession of wars and earthquakes, the city fell into ruins. But the wells, fed by sources springing far below the surface of the ground, have never ceased to yield a plentiful supply of water. At the first pool, the tired animals are led to drink. Their drivers hasten towards the walled gardens laid out in ancient times around the old springs and are welcomed by the keeper of the wells. To these travelers, shade is almost as great a luxury as water, and enough water to wash in is really a luxury. And now, a sleep, the kind he never gets in the desert. There is no need here to protect your head from the bludgeoning of the sun and your face and eyes from the searching talons of the sand. A man can go to sleep at peace with himself and the world, while above and around him sleep also many sounding pages of the world's past, the memory of things done and suffered when Syria was the cradle of civilization. This tiny spot of green in the middle of the desert, now but a huddle of ruins, once rang with the sounding of great names. King Solomon built the city, 
to commemorate the ground on which David slew Goliath. These ruined pillars felt the rage of Nebuchadnezzar as he traveled to destroy Jerusalem. Mark Antony, remembered most for his tragic love of Cleopatra, once dared the crossing of the desert to reach these halls. In the days when they stood erect and proud beneath the burning Syrian sun. Not for water. Mark Antony would not leave the Tiber or Nile for the water of a desert oasis, but for the plunder he could loot from a wealthy city to finance his passion for the Queen of Egypt. In these very halls, a lineal descendant of Cleopatra was to reenact the tragedy of conflict between Roman soldier and Egyptian queen. Queen Zenobia was her name, the Elizabeth of ancient Syria, the queen who built this once mighty temple to the great sun god of the ancient Syrians. Unlike Cleopatra, she defied him. And in the great desert battle which ensued, half the city was demolished. Zenobia went captive to Rome and Palmyra was put to fire and sword. In revenge for the city's stubborn resistance, the Roman legions tore down Zenobia's richest temples, some literally stone from stone. When the Romans themselves passed away, there was none left in Syria with the wealth and power of a Solomon to restore Palmyra. The city fell into decay. Earthquake and successive plunderings by Turk and Arab have completed the destruction. The glory which was Solomon's now sleeps forever. <laughs>